have been introducing our theme for the year. Living by the fruit of the Spirit. Living by the fruit of the Spirit. When you live by something, it declares that whatever that by is, is a core value. It's a core virtue. It's a core commitment. If you're a person who lives by your word, then your word is of essence to everything that you do. If you're a person who lives by love, then love is important to all that you do. If you're a person who lives by hospitality, then being hospitable and being welcoming and being warm is something that you do. It flows through every action or activity. Every engagement, every interaction. You, you can't be a person who lives by peace and you always start something. You, 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 you can't be a person who lives by happiness. But you're always upset. Whatever you live by becomes a core value and a core ethic. It becomes a piece of your moral balance. It becomes who you are. It becomes how people can measure your growth and measure your effectiveness. We're suggesting that in 2020, that all of us are going to live by the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Meaning there are nine different things that we will measure our growth by. We'll measure our growth by our love, by our joy, by our peace, by our patience, by our kindness, by our goodness, by our faithfulness, by our gentleness and by our self-control. These are the nine aspects, the nine fruit, the nine attributes of the Holy Spirit. And we're going to activate that as I've been sharing for the last couple of weeks by operating from a emphasis on four things. The first is that we are going to continue to learn how to love one another. We're not going to assume that we know how to do it. We're going to continue to learn how to love one another. And then we're going to learn, continue to learn, how to read the Bible. We should not be intimidated by this Bible. We should learn about the context behind it, the content of it. What is it about? What is it for? Why do we use it? And then we want to deepen our prayer lives. By the end of 2020, y'all should be self-declared prayer warriors. Y'all should be looking for anybody, anything, any situation to pray for because you have operated from a muscle. You know how muscles are when you grow your muscle. You got to increase the weight and the resistance because that muscle is so strong. So when you increase your prayer muscles, you can't pray enough. You actually enjoy spending time with God that you can't get enough. And you look for reasons and situations to pray for so you can operate, exercise that muscle. And then the fourth thing, we're going to learn how to share the gospel. When Jesus left, he said, Go ye therefore, the great commission, share the gospel, all right? Make disciples, be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I don't want anyone under the sound of my voice in this household to be afraid to share the gospel. I don't want you to be anxious because you don't know the right words to say. I don't want you to be nervous because you may get it wrong. I want you to feel so empowered, so inspired, so excited that you can even share the gospel without anyone knowing that you're sharing the gospel. By just being who God has called you to be. Because that's what I want to experience. To actually have people ask you about God just because of the way that you live. So those are the four things that we're going to focus on in 2020. I've taken the whole month of January. 
January just to set the, 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 the syllabus for our journey together. Amen. We set the learning objectives for our time together. Amen. We, we have four bullet points. Amen. We got nine things. Amen. Y'all know the syllabus when you get on the first day of school. You flip through to see what your reading is. Amen. And you flip through to see what your assignments are. Amen. And you want to flip through to see what are the things that the, 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 the teacher or the instructor or the professor are asking of you. So we got four and nine. Amen. Four things that we're going to work on together and nine things that we're going to measure our growth on this year. Amen? Amen. Now we've been talking about the Holy Spirit. We've invoked the presence of the Holy Spirit on Consecration Sunday. Uh, the Holy Spirit is, is, is the spirit form of God, uh, the Trinitarian God, who is God creator, God incarnation, meaning God in human form, and then God in spirit form, the Holy Spirit. I want to give you three things that I want you to really ponder and press into as I conclude my sermon today. Three things that I want you to really ponder and press into. The first is this. That true change, true change in the Holy Spirit is transformational and not transactional. When the Holy Spirit comes in and changes your life, it's transformational, it's not transactional. You can look back on your life and say, on this particular day, everything for the rest of my life changed. You, you don't want to look back over your life and say, well, I, I changed, and then three days later, I changed back. And then, and then, I, then I changed again, and then three months later, I changed back. That's not the move of the Holy Spirit. That's your own personal will. There's a difference between God's will and God's intervention, God's move by the Holy Spirit and your own move. Come on, somebody. If I want to stop eating Brussels sprouts, I got enough willpower to stop eating Brussels sprouts for a couple of weeks. I can do that. I can press in on that. But if the Holy Spirit tells me to stop eating Brussels sprouts, and, and, and does the work within me, then I'll never want to eat Russell Sprouts again. Somebody, somebody over here say amen. 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 I'm not looking at your mama. Amen. I'm not looking at your mama. Move over here. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. People want to be, be listening to the sermon. Amen. We got proof. Number two, true change in the Holy Spirit is measured by the increase of the fruit or the attributes. Act not a tree. Attributes of the Holy Spirit. Essentially, that true change is measured by the increase of love in your life, the increase of joy in your life, the increase of peace in your life, the increase of patience in your life. Say amen, somebody. The increase of kindness in your life. Hallelujah. The increase of goodness in your life. Hallelujah. Ooh, the increase of faithfulness in your life. Thank you, Jesus. The increase of gentleness in your life, Hallelujah. and the increase of self-control in your life. When the Holy Spirit changes you, true change is reflected by these nine measurements. So in church, we often say, I want to be more like Jesus. Jesus was the incarnate incarnate human manifestation of these nine attributes. So when you say that you want to be more like Jesus, what you're really saying is you want more of the Holy Spirit within you. And you want more of the Holy Spirit to change you to be more like Jesus. <coughs> Jesus is the human form of God. Jesus is the human exemplification of who God is. Jesus is what God looks like in person. And so when we want to be more like Jesus, what we're saying is we want more of the Holy Spirit within us. We want to be changed by the Holy Spirit. True transformation. Those are the three things. <coughs> Changing the Holy Spirit is transformational, not transactional. 
Change in the Holy Spirit is measured by an increase in the fruit of the Spirit. Change in the Holy Spirit, here's the third one, excuse me, is grounded in prayer. Change in the Holy Spirit is grounded in prayer. You can't get true change in the Holy Spirit without prayer. It's not going to happen. Because prayer is the dialogue with God. Now, you don't have to pray the way that somebody else prays. Right. You, you can get your own flow with God. You, you can talk to God however you want to. How you feel led, how you feel. It, it, it's getting your point across and also listening to God. But true change in the Holy Spirit does not operate separate and apart from prayer. Which is why Jesus was always teaching the disciples. Jesus would often, in moments of distress, break away to pray. When Jesus got frustrated, Jesus pushed time out of real life and prayed. When Jesus got anxious, then Jesus pushed time out and went and prayed. And then he also taught the disciples how to pray. Because when you get in a loving it, oh, help me now, with the Father, And things that will reassure you that you're okay, that you're moving in the right direction, or will show you that you're moving in the wrong direction and you're not okay, so you better get in the light. <clears throat> See, I know that we, you know, BLC got formation, and she's good at it. But God was a true formation before BLC had the formation.
The people in the crowd were religious leaders, often called Pharisees. They were Jewish by tradition and by culture. And some of them, some of the Pharisees, actually believed that they had the power to cast out demons. So when they saw Jesus successfully cast out a demon, they said that since you're not one of us, you must be casting out demons in the name of Satan. Now Jesus is one of the smartest people that ever walked the planet. Because he looks at them like you're on a playground and says, well listen, if I'm casting out Satan's demons in the name of Satan, what kind of sense does that make? Like, doesn't Satan send the demons to attack people? So why would I cast out Satan's demons who Satan sent? So that don't make sense. And then Jesus says, by the way, you Pharisees out there, aren't y'all casting out demons too? So he said, you know, basically, I know you are, but what am I? Right? Because if you're casting out demons, then aren't you working for Satan too? By your own logic. What Jesus is really saying is that the proof is in the pudding, not in the recipe. Has anybody eaten the recipe? <laughs> See, you can swear that you got the best recipe on the planet, but until you make it, it ain't there. You're talking about I can make it this and I can make it that. Yeah. <laughs> 
And when the Holy Spirit transforms, Just so happy. 